All right, in this video, we are going to convert this model into this and uh, using 3.js and a website called Shader Frog. Right, before watching this video, I would just recommend you to watch the previous video from where this video is actually being continued. So this one is the older video, how to implement a simple GLSL shader in 3.js. I'll put it in a playlist also so that it's easier for you to navigate around. And if you like my channel, please consider subscribing. All right, so this is the code that uh, I, where I left off in the last video. And once again, I'm highly recommending you to watch the older video, otherwise, uh, this tutorial won't make sense to you. So please go ahead and get the fragment shader and vertex shader from you know from the last video and then get back to this video. All right. So what we are going to do here is we already have the custom shader material on a cube and let's just run this and see what ha what happens. So this is what it looks like. Um, uh, this is a custom shader material that we are using rather than the mesh basic material we are using a custom shader material so this is actually not required so I'm just gonna remove this yeah all right let's see if, yeah everything is working fine cool all right so now what we are going to do is um, writing these fragment shader and vertex shader is gonna take a lot of time so let's say um, if you want to take if you want a shader that maybe you're not that interested to write your own shader and you want to just get going and you just want to get started with some shader you just want that output you want that effect so i suggest you to go to shaderfrog.com and you get a bunch of different shaders over here so just for your information this is not a sponsored video or anything I'm not promoting shader frog because they are paying me money or something I'm just uh, get telling you about this tool that I use and um, yeah it's not any paid promotion so uh, I used it and I found it helpful so I'm just letting you all know about it all right so what I did was uh, I just looked for a matrix shader that's it and I searched for it and uh, I got one that I liked so I like this one and then I checked out the source code and then I copied and pasted everything from here but uh, you know a little bit of modification is required even if you copy all this code okay so now I'm just going to copy paste this uh, fragment shader and the vertex shader so first let's go and and copy and paste this uh, fragment shader to my code so all credits to shader frog and whoever has made this uh, you know fragment shader and the vertex shader so thanks a lot for that um, let's go back to the code and in my fragment shader.glsl.js I'm just going to replace this code with the code that they have given all right and uh, yeah that's it and then um, all of, all of course the vertex shader as well I'm just going to copy and paste it like that wait no um, remove the main method and then obviously copy paste it yeah looks good okay okay so now I'm just going to make a few changes um, according to whatever you know I have done a few experiments before so uh, whatever is not required so I'll just remove that obviously the comment lines and everything can be removed that's all right but other than that these uniform variables that you see over here these model uh, this model matrix uh, view matrix all this is already available in 3.jsl in the shader all right so as you can all obviously read from the lines like default 3.js uniforms available to both fragment and vertex shader so this is not really required so I'm just going to remove that otherwise it's just going to show a redefinition error in your uh, browser 
and then this provided by shader frog right so it's saying camera position and flow time we don't need that so we're going to remove that and then uh, these attributes as well like default attributes provided by 3.js we're not going to really need all this so I'm just going to remove yeah and then you can remove that as well yeah I think that's that's looking good all right um, I think the vertex shader looks good and let's go let's go back to fragment shader and see so one change that I will recommend you to do is because like I have uh, I've removed this background color and so basically this background color what it does is change it it changes the color of your uh, black cube to whatever you uh, whatever color you want to give so I'm just going to remove this or maybe I can even give this uh, so I can remove this and I'll remove it from here also and rather than uh, you know giving background color I'm just going to hard code it to a black color so what this means is my red channel is 0 my green channel is uh, 0 and my blue channel is also 0 which means it's a black color and 1.0 1 1.0 means the alpha is the opacity of that color is set to um, full that means it will be visible not transparent if you want to make it transparent you can keep it at zero keep this as uh, 0 0.5 all right so 1.0 is fine for me and uh, yeah all right let's uh, now what we are going to do is we are going to pass these uniforms from our main program so that means we'll have to create our own uniform and then to do so I'm just going to create a new variable called uniforms so for each uniform that you see in the fragment shader let's say time speed care size care resolution color resolution all these have to be defined over here so let's go ahead and do that okay right so you can see I have defined all the uniforms and I'm just going to pass all those uniforms into my shader which will be like this inside the uniforms parameter of uh, my shader material yeah now the problem with this is it will not work if you go back to the browser it will show all these different uh, issues so I mean it's showing only one issue but I know what's the issue because of you know I've uh, done this before so uh, I'll tell you why uh, what I've done here is given uniforms as 0 0.0 0 0.0 0 0.0 and this is just for initializing state and uh, because I want you to understand what's going wrong now if you go back to your fragment shader you'll see my the the time uniform is float the speed is also float car size all these are not float car size is not float it's vec2 color is vec3 resolution is vec2 car resolution is a float so you need to accordingly give the values all right so let's say for time for time the value should be a float so I'm giving a float value that's perfectly fine uh, next is uh, oh, I should have put speed before but it's all right um, let's put speed up here yeah so my speed is also a type of float so the value is a float only so this is 18.0 you can put in 0.0 .0. I just uh, 
you know I just use 18.0 because that is what I used earlier uh, but you can obviously bump it up later on we'll see uh, we can obviously make changes to this all the time now car size all right car size over here is a vec2 okay so what does a vec2 mean it has uh, two components x and y so how you do that is you give it like this you give 2.0 and then y as 1.5 okay so that's your vec2 and obviously for vec3 it will be x y z right now let's see if uh, car resolution is a float value so i have given 0.0, .0. Mm, all right and color color should be a vec3 all right so here is the cool thing uh, if you write new three dot color all right and then over here i'm just going to pass green because matrix uh, you know it has all these green green particles that come out so this color is a green and this whole thing is actually uh, you know it has rgb channel so it's a whole vec3 only so if you check uh, you know the 3.js official documentation um, it has all these colors so i mean not the colors i mean it has all the parameters r g and b so they can be easily converted into a vec3 all right so back to the code and this uh, value will be easily converted into a vec3 because it has three channels already and then resolution will be uh, vec2 again so that will be again x x or something so i'm just going to put it 1.0 and y as 1.0 as well so i think it should work now let's go back to the browser and see what happens yeah it's there so you can see the uh, you know you can remove this uh, inspector window you can remove this inspector window and just do a refresh yeah you can see the uh, matrix type of effect on the cube but the problem is that these uh, particles they are not moving around as in you know they are, they are not dropping right so that's because there is a problem with the code once again so you can see here the time uh, value is always 0.0, .0 right? it's not changing so the problem here if you notice uh, let's see where is time of uniform flow time is fine yeah over here the position of each particle it's being time into speed into random ipos.x so that means this time needs to be a variable if you keep it as zero floor of zero will always be zero and vec 2 0 point uh, if you do vec 2 0 point zero and add it to any position it will stay as zero it will I mean the position will stay the same it will never change so to make this uh, make this uh, change with time what I'm going to do is going to set this variable down here in tick in the tick uh, function so to do so I'll just write uniforms dot time dot value equal to uh, we want the time that is being uh, that is getting elapsed right so in order to do that we'll have to create a clock okay and uh, I'm just going to call that elapsed time method yeah and if I go back to my browser I think it should work now uh, yeah you can see the dropping effect you know like the matrix is uh, the particles are dropping right now obviously uh, if you go back to your shade of rock you can see the particles are a bit bigger so you know how do I do how do I make the changes to the particle uh, I made these characters as uh, the character resolution and everything I tried changing it a bit and you can obviously use the values that are given here if you notice character resolution you see they are using 7.72425 and whatnot 
so let's see if um, if I can use this uh, if we use let's say something close to 7.5 and if I go back to my browser you you do see um, the particles taking a bit of an effect like that but still not as good as you want let's see 5.5 nah it's still not that's because like the resolution and everything is a bit different over in my case and in their case they are using like 0.46 if you use the exact same values you'll get this same effect so I'm just going to copy paste that resolution and let's see there you go so you have that kind of effect now and you can obviously play with the speed you can keep it as 10.0 and it'll go slower kind of like a block blocky effect or what you want to call it I don't know all right so we have the matrix shader now and um, you have it on a queue rather than on a mesh so like this my mesh in this case is the cube uh, but in the rest in the later part of the video we are going to see how to convert it um, into how to apply this matrix effect into a proper 3d model all right so this is the 3d model that we are going to use and it has been done by uh, Ron Choka I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong but uh, this is the model that you should be downloading all right it's uh, from Sketchfab uh, it's uh, on Sketchfab I'll leave this link down in the comments and uh, you can download 3d model and you can obviously uh, download the GLB format rather than the GLTF format so click on download and um, so once it's downloaded I'll show you what to do next Alright, so back in my project, I have the roncho.glb file uh, downloaded and I put it inside assets folder and I created this, this assets folder in my project. So that's what you have to do as well. I think you, you'll be able to manage that, right? Alright, now we are going to use this uh, 3D model in our project. So the way we are going to use that is we are going to use GLTF loader. and if you haven't checked out my other video where I show you how to load 3D models uh, using 3.js, uh, I'll definitely suggest you to go ahead and watch that video as well. And if you haven't, well, we can do that over here. So let's go ahead and do that. GLTF loader from .3.js master loaders. There you go that's the import and we have imported GLTF loader perfect and if we go down okay now we are going to load or uh, use that GLTF loader and load our model so let's see I'm just going to make it over here just load a variable or to new GLTF loader Assets. and here we are going to give the path which is assets um, so basically this dot is for the current directory and um, then you give the path name as like you know the relative path so this is the path and uh, then you call the function glp you can replace that with arrow functions as well I'm just going to stick to um, this function like that and let's see if uh, this is actually getting loaded properly or not so I'm just going to console log it so that I check whether uh, so that I'm able to check it in the uh, log window all right let's uh, do control shift and I and if I expand I'm seeing an object over here which is actually the same uh, model that is that we downloaded so 
so yeah i think it's uh, fine let's let's just add it to our scene as well and we'll do that using scene dot add um, glb dot scene right let's see so oh the <laughs> so the cube and the the model is at the same uh, is in the same scene so what i'll do is i'll remove the uh, cube mesh from the scene and there you go so the model is uh, over there all right all right so we are going to change the look of this model now with our shader and how i'm going to do that is let's go back to our model and see inside the scene we have all these different uh, go to children and see mesh right so we have the mesh and you can change the material to uh, mesh shader material rather than mesh standard material so what I'm going to do is go inside this children uh, I mean I'll go inside the scene and then inside children and then I'm going to modify the material property so let's jump back to my code and let's get rolling so first of all uh, I'm going to call this I don't know uh, roncho materials um, glb dot scene dot children and the first element of that of those children and I'm going to take the material property and I'm going to set that property to oh wait so that means it's just material right so instead of uh, defining a variable I can just uh, do this rather than that so I just make the material equal to my custom shader material and I think that should that's it yeah um, let's go back yeah there you go you can see the shader applied to your matrix uh, applied to your you know the model that you downloaded from sketchfab all right that's it that's it for this video um, if you want this uh, you know model to look a bit bigger what uh, there are many ways to do that and one of the ways that I am going to do that is just by changing the position and to nearer so I'll just make the camera to go nearer to the object so I'm just going to make it two and that that shows that you know uh, it went towards the model and that's why it looks a bit bigger um, Obviously, the resolution of the characters, they are a bit too big. Uh, let's change the, um, you know, the resolution to be a little, probably 2.5. Oh, uh, that makes it bigger. So let's make it 10.5. See. Yeah, that, mm, looking good. Let's see if I can make it 20.5. Nah, it's not looking good. Hold on. So let's make it 5.5 and change the resolution rather to 1.0 and 1.0 so these are values that you know you you keep testing with those and you get the result that you want uh, these values and all you can keep uh, experimenting so I had to do a some I had to spend some time to experiment around and these were the values that I came up with 1.0 and 5.5 that is why I'm using these values. You can go ahead and use whatever you want. So obviously, uh, and the speed also, I kept it as 18.0. So there you go. Pretty cool, right? All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.